Hi, TGIF, and welcome to Fridays with Flora. And today is going to be more of a demonstration on chalk painting an old mirror. I've had a lot of luck with um, chalk painting some cool pieces I found at various thrift shops, like an old rocker, um, a decorative table, and also a nightstand for like $9. So I've been really digging into this whole chalk painting trend, and I found this old mirror in the back of a closet from the previous owners of our house. And I thought, you know what? Let's chalk paint it to get it to fit more with the decor of our bedroom. So join me today as I show you how to easily chalk paint an old mirror. All right, first things first, you've got to clean your piece. The beauty about chalk paint is you don't have to prep your piece at all. You don't have to sand it. You don't have to prime it. Chalk paint's just gonna really stick to it, but it's not gonna stick that well if there's grease and there's dirt. So some dish soap or some laundry detergent that cuts dirt and grease gently um, and some water on an old um, soft rag and just go ahead and clean the dirt off of your piece. Okay, so now that this is clean and you let this dry, the next step is to tape off the mirror part so you don't get any chalk paint on the mirror. And I would work in small chunks so that you can be pretty detailed about it. As you can see, we taped this all off. And now we're going to put our first coat of chalk paint. Now, here in the Midwest, some of the states, we don't get Annie Sloan, which is the, like, the chalk paint to have. So I have this Americana decor that I use that I get at Home Depot, and I do believe I think Michaels carries it as well. Um, so give it a good shake. And open it up. And then I just use a typical plain old chip brush. Um, I prefer to use the fancy brush for the waxing piece of it, get a true waxing brush, because it's got more of a flat surface and I'll show you that when we get to waxing this. Um, but for this phase, and we're gonna put probably two coats on this, first coat usually looks kind of poopy. So don't freak out. And sometimes you might wanna water this down depending how thick it is. Okay, so we have a little bit of paint and again, like I said, if you want to water this down a little bit, you can. It is a little bit thick, but let's see how this works. So my technique is to go kind of against the grain first and get it all in there. And then work with, so against and then with. And then when you get to this part, you're just going to need a little bit of patience. To get into your nooks and crannies, if you will. And when I say that the first coat's usually poopy is because it's pretty streaky. But the second coat usually it's a self-leveling paint too so it kind of self-levels as it dries and for some of the detail work you might be more comfortable using a smaller brush so continue on in this way until the mirror is covered you might have to wait a few minutes to turn the mirror to do the side that's on the ground if you're working on the ground I would also do the front first and then work on your top edge after you're done with this front. So after waiting a little bit, we turned the mirror over and finished this side. It's really streaky, don't worry, don't panic. The first coat's always not so great. Um, let this sit for a couple hours and then we'll be ready for our second coat. Now here's a little trick that I do with my brush rather than having to clean it all the time. Wrap it up tightly in a plastic bag and pop it in the refrigerator. It 
and uh, it'll stay moist and you can just pull it out when the second coat is ready to go. So sit tight, we'll let this cure just for a couple hours and we'll um, get our second coat going. Okay, so this has been sitting and you can see that this is dry and yes, it's very, very streaky. So <clears throat> our second coat's going to help this. So again, go against and then with. see already it's looking a lot smoother so go all the way around okay so we're on our second coat and it just needs to dry overnight and then we are going to wax it and you can see that things are a lot smoother and less streaky now if you missed some spots like over in here. Don't worry because we're going to get some brown wax in there. Um, so that'll just kind of blend in and it'll it'll just add to like that distressed shabby chic look too. We don't want things to be too perfect. So we're going to let it sit overnight, clean your paintbrush, and um, I'll show you how to wax things in the morning. Alrighty, we're ready to go here. So second coat. Um, still think it's a little streaky on the edges, but you know what? I'm kind of looking for a little bit of a kind of shabby chic, distressed kind of look. So I think it's okay because we're going to be using some brown wax. And so it's going to look a little bit more kind of rough around the edges and rustic. But if it's too rustic for you, you can always go to one more coat. Again, it's self-leveling and, you know, it, it, a third coat would definitely have a deeper white and, and have less streaks but I'm gonna stick with just the two, and now it's time to um, wax. So when you're using brown wax, you can't just really go to the brown wax first because you need it to be kind of delicate and to move around. You need to have a clear wax first. And the clear wax kind of seals it and gives it a little bit of a sheen, um, but it's a soft sheen. It's it, it the the beauty about the chalk paint with the cream wax. It, it has like the softness, um, the soft look to it because it's plaster that's actually mixed into the paint with the chalk paint. So um, you don't need a lot of this. And I have a plate that I always use. It's this old plastic plate that I got from the dollar store, and this is kind of like my wax plate. You can see I've at times used brown wax, and then here I'm going to put a little bit of the cream wax. And you don't need a lot of this. And then I have a waxing brush. Sorry, let me get this up close. So you can see, this has got like a flat surface. And what you do is, you take a little bit of the wax and you tap. You don't need a lot. And what you're going to do is you're going to work in a circular motion like this. And move the wax around. And then like we did with the painting, then go with the grain. You want the thinnest coat of wax. And you'll notice like you can get a lot from one application. Now as you work, have like an old rag, clean rag, and then kind of work with the wax because you don't want any clumps or anything sticky. So you kind of just gently wipe off any ex excess and then just keep going round circular what this does is it kind of gets into the nooks and crannies and then work with your grain like that so keep going until this is all covered with a thin coat 
and then let it dry for an hour. And then we'll work on our brown wax. Alrighty. The mirror has been sitting for a few hours to let that wax kind of settle in. Now it isn't cured at this point. It's just kind of set and dry and it's able to be worked on with the brown wax. Now this is cream brown wax and brown wax is nice because you can have things look aged and I would suggest that you use a different wax brush for brown versus your cream wax so that you don't cross contaminate your wax your waxes as you're working um, and sometimes what I do with brown wax is I just use even an old rag and kind of kind of mush it into kind of the cra the the, um, the nooks and the crannies and then brush it off and away and move it around with just a rag. You could do that. Now, this piece in particular is really, really detailed. So I'm gonna use a smaller brush. It's actually my husband's. Shh, don't tell him. We're gonna have to clean it off very well when we're done. And you just put a little bit of brown wax on your plate. You're not gonna need a lot. And if you want, if you're feeling kind of nervous, you can always mix it with a little bit of the cream wax just to kind of extend it and move it around a little bit. Or if you just want to be brave, you can just put it on straight. So a couple things to know about the brown wax phase. So we're aging things, which means the brown wax really belongs inside the nooks and crannies. Anything that's raised would have been rubbed off, right? So start in the middle and then have a rag nearby. Oops, sorry, sorry for the jiggle people. And rub it off. And you can keep working it in rub more off rub less off I want things to be a little darker over there so I'm gonna rub less off It's really more art than science. And you can continue to rub certain areas to kind of burnish it a little bit.
feeling that looks pretty good. I'm going to kind of focus a lot of the, um, the brown wax in the corners and kind of like diffuse it a little bit and go really light in the center. So keep working it and you can keep going back in certain areas, kind of rub. So I'm just going to keep going. So take a look at your piece, you know, step back and, you know, make sure that everything, I don't know, feels cohesive and nice and, you know, you don't have too much brown wax in one area and not enough in another. And um, now you're going to let this sit and cure overnight, but it really isn't fully cured. The piece is not fully cured until seven days actually. So be careful with it. So anyway, let me take the tape off and then I can show you the finished product. So after you're done, take a step back and make sure you've got the right amount of brown wax that you are looking for. Um, and then once things are kind of set, take the tape off and then go in and with a, um, a razor blade, kind of clean up your edges because some of the paint might have gotten under. I know this mirror in particular I noticed. Um, it's so old, you know, it was starting to shift within the frame. So just going in and definitely down here you can see where things got kind of messy. So I go in and gently scrape. clean up your edges. Then get some Windex, clean up the mirror. And then clean up any weird things that you might want to do some touch up in various areas. So I'll do this for a little bit and uh, then we'll talk about curing and such. Okay, test ending, take one. Here it all is in all its glory. Looks pretty good, right? Of course we're in the basement so you really can't see how pretty it is. So let's bring it upstairs and take a look at it in a real bedroom. it all is in all its glory, all cleaned and uh, cleaned on the edges, windexed and ready to rock. Looks pretty nice, right? Although maybe you can't tell because we're in the basement and I don't know, there's just stuff all over because this is where we do a lot of our painting. So let's bring it upstairs so you can see how pretty it is um, in a real bedroom. So that concludes Fridays with Flora this week. Thanks for stopping by and learning about chalk painting and chalk painting an old mirror. And uh, come by next Friday, we're gonna be working with cake mixes and turning cake mixes into bougie cookies. So stay tuned. And if you want to get a little bit more of the Urban Domestic Diva lifestyle, come by my Pinterest account. Um, I'm on Instagram, follow me there and visit the blog because there's a lot of good stuff there and my YouTube channel. So thanks a lot for your support and uh, hope to see you next Friday. Bye-bye.